I, we had just, uh, the whole group in sync had just gotten back from, uh, like the Turks and Caicos area, and we had literally flown in and landed in Florida at like four in the morning or something. So I had just gotten to bed at like five in the morning. And uh, so I was asleep when, when it happened. Uh, I get woken up, my mom kind of walks in my room. She had lived down the road at the time and she dro dro drove over to my place with my brother and she's like, wake up, wake up, turn the TV on. You know, it's, there's, there, there's, and, you know, there's craziness going on. And I go, what? Ah. So I turned the TV on and it just didn't look real. I thought it was a movie. So I literally turned the TV off and I was like, oh, whatever. And she goes to the, to the living room because I was in my bedroom. I turned the TV off. Two minutes later, she busts and She's like, get up. And I'm just like, what? And then she's like, calm down. And then, you know, um, that's when, you know, all the reality kind of set in. I mean, m my initial reaction was, again, it just didn't feel real. You know, you're looking at these two iconic symbols, these buildings. And, and, and you're thinking to yourself, you know, nobody could ever fly a plane into something like, I mean, they have flight patterns, they have all this, you know, and I'm thinking it could never happen. It, it, was, it was just a disbelief. Um, and then, you know, again, it, it set in, you know, I actually saw the second plane hit and I was just like, it was just shock and awe. And, um, and even that though felt like a movie. The, the, the part that, I would say really got to me. The part that really was the dagger in my stomach, and it was just chilling, scary. It was the most horrific thing I had ever seen. Was when I saw people jumping out of the building. When I saw people, you know, because they were either going to be burned alive, or you know, they were going to take their chances, hoping that they can, I don't know, grab something on the way down, or be the the one that you always hear about when people jump out of plane. Oh, he bounced, but he lived. I mean, when I saw people jumping out of the building. That was worse than any movie scene. That was worse than anything I'd ever read. It, it was just the most horrible thing that I, I can even, I, can, I couldn't even imagine. Well, you know, in the, in the days following, obviously everybody got active right away. I mean, the first thing that, you know, we all did was essentially reach out to each other because we had just gotten home off the road and, you know, it was 10 o'clock in the morning. We were still groggy, but we reached out to each other and we were like, how, can we do something right away? The first thing we did is we have to do something, you know, because we're young and, and fun. So we thought that, you know, our young, exciting, fresh spirits could, could essentially in some way just inspire a positivity in a terrible situation. Um, we just wanted to keep, you know, maybe just look for a way to take people's minds off of the negative aspects you know, um, and that was obviously, and I think that was pretty much everybody's first response in the entertainment world. They, were go, they go, okay, how do we res respect these people that are losing so much? How do we, it, for one second, sh you know, show the world, you know, the, the human spirit of America and, and, and how to be positive, you know, and, and to kind of fight through this, this terrible thing. And so we all reached out to each other. And of course, you know, the, the request started pouring in right away because everybody kind of thought that to themselves. Everybody was in a take action mode, I think. And uh, so when we started getting calls to do specials and TRLs and all this stuff, we of course jumped at the chance. You know, we're, we're going to do anything we can to let the people know that who are going through this horrible thing that they're not alone, even though we have, you know, we could never, you know, essentially be in their shoes. They're not alone, you know, so. What, what, what we did, which was a fantastic thing, I'm originally from the Washington DC area and the Pentagon got hit. And, you know, a lot of people were all about the towers, the towers, the towers, but it was very close to home for me because, you know, my father, you know, when I was young, worked, you know, all around the D.C. area. He worked for NASA for a while. He worked in the White House for a while. So it was very, very close to home for me. Uh, and uh, so my immediate thing was, you know, I don't want these people to be forgotten, you know. I, you know, with all due respect, and you know, I, I was thinking about everyone in New York, but I was also thinking about the people in Washington D.C. and they were they were widely overlooked to a certain degree, and um, so the first thing I did was, you know, I called my manager and I go, what can we do to kind of sort, you know, uh, sort something out about this? You know, let's put something together. And I talked to the guys and they were like, yeah, let's put something together, and you know, it, we all kind of were brainstorming and uh, finally. We were like, well, let's put on a show and let's get everybody to be a part of it. 
And of course, a lot of artists were thinking the same thing. And what ended up happening is the whole thing kind of took shape as like kind of like the rock and roll crowd did the Madison Square Garden thing. And then the pop crowd did RFK Stadium, you know, and that's where my favorite football team, the Redskins, play, you know. Um, and uh, so we got, you know, in New York, you had, you know, the Elton Johns, the Bruce Springsteens and all of these amazing artists. And then down in RFK, you know, we were able to get Britney, Michael Jackson, you know, Diddy. You know, we really put together the biggest pop show that we could think of and, and just to let those people know that we were there for them. So the, sh the show was incredible. I mean, it was emotional. It felt big. Um, and you, I have to say, we all felt connected. I mean, probably one of the most emotional music moments in my life was when uh, Michael Jackson was out there singing Man in the Mirror and the whole crowd is feeling this idea of, you know, I'm asking, you know, I'm, I'm talking to the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways, you know. Uh, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make a change. And, and, and it, he's asking us to look at ourselves and then essentially reach out to everyone and love them, make the world a better place. And that message resonated. I mean, there was a vibration in the room. The music's coming out. He's out on the crane. The whole, everybody who participated in the show is out on the stage in front of, you know, 45 to, you know, 60,000 people. It was one of the most emotional moments of my career. After 9-11 happened and we were all getting involved, you know, everybody's looking for a way to get involved. You know, when we were putting all, when we decided to put uh, an event together, we kind of went straight to the hub. We, we went straight to New York. Um, and, uh, Whenever I'm in, <clears throat> excuse me, whenever I'm in New York, um, at that time, I always had a driver who was an ex-cop. I just made sure I always had him because he knew the streets, he knew where, you know, who to talk to, and, you know, because he's a retired, he, he gets that respect. He wears this ring that is essentially his retirement ring, but it's his badge, and that always kind of smooths things over in any situation, you know. It, it's always a good thing. Have a cop on your side, you know, and... Um, so when I went up there, you know, the first thing he did is pick me up from the airport and, he, and he's like, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go to ground zero. And he's like, well, you know, they got it blocked off and blocked off, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go there. We'll go straight there. So, <clears throat> you know, I fresh off the plane, uh, his, his guy's name's Pete. He's, a, again, a retired cop. And he, and he drives me straight to where essentially the whole place is barricaded off. You know, we're, you're blocks away from ground zero and you can still, you still smell the ash and the you know the, the dirt in the air and there are there are you know there are military sleeping all around the barricade because they're on 24 hour shifts and we couldn't get you know we obviously could only get so far you know so what he goes well, what do you want to do and I go well you know I just want to talk to people you know these people are, are in here I, w I want to know what's going on like can I just talk to somebody and and you know see how they're feeling because I'm about to go speak you know to 50,000 people on a stage and I want them to see you know sincerely that I'm there with them you know I was asleep when it happened you know and I'm you know 1200 you know 1500 miles away I want them to know that I'm there with them so I just need to speak to somebody I need to feel what they're feeling and so what he did is he of course flashed his ring a cop gave me his badge and his jacket and a hat and I went in undercover and I walked all the way in to where they're digging. And it was one of the most horrific th things I'd ever seen. You know, they're digging and I'm, you know, there are petrified body parts. They were charred to where they were hard. And you know, this guy's, the cranes are coming in and they're pulling these giant loads of material up and body parts are falling out of them. And that was one of the most horrific things I'd ever seen but I, I stayed there for about an hour and I talked to about four or five cops you know and and they're just I mean they're, they're like look man we're just looking for survivors we know it's been three or four days you know the ground is hot because everything's still on fire underneath you and they're just like we've you know we found somebody two hours ago you know we, we, we found somebody a couple hours ago and you know we found one you know and and they're just on they're just so passionately on autopilot. They're not, they're, they're very aware of their surrounding, but the only thing they're thinking of is how can I help one more? And that blew me away. They're in the middle of this horrible place 
and all they can think about, you know, they're not overcome by the moment anymore. They just, they just turned into, I just need to save the next life. And it, it was amazing to see. But, you know, when they stopped to talk about it, they would get emotional because that was the only time they had to think about it. And so when they're there at first, they're digging, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then you talk to them for five minutes and then the reality would set in. And then you would feel what they're feeling. And then, you know, you, you well up and you cry a little bit and they cry. And I mean, it was really, again, I just, I didn't even know you could petrify a human part, you know, and they're literally moving them out of the way. I mean, hands, heads, it, it was, it, it was insane. It makes you very aware. I mean, we, we've all essentially, all of us in our lifetime will deal with a death in the family, you know, losing a loved one. But you'll never experience, I mean, not, I would say most will never experience anything as gruesome as that. Um, as I would, they just won't have to deal with an attack like that in a situation like that. You just can't put it into words. I was, I was, I was very fortunate that, you know, I had a cop as a driver and, and he was able to talk to somebody. But I wasn't about to go again try and con you know, convey a message that everybody was feeling it, no doubt about it. But if I'm going to address people essentially intimately, even though it's in a big space, it's a conversation. When you're in a room with somebody, it doesn't really matter how big it is. You have each other's attention. I'm aware of the audience. They're aware of me. We're having a conversation. When we're... And uh, so I wanted them to know that I feel whatever they're feeling because I had at that point experienced it. So.